So uh, we're waiting for Amol Parikaji to arrive, but we can start off. Um, Anita, uh, her sister, you saw her on the screen. <laughs> She's Mitha Patel's old, your older sister, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Pallad uh, was an AD on uh, no, Bhumika. I was a slave. You were the what? A slave. You were a slave. <laughs> so it's 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 the most important role, but uh, Pallad was a slave for, for many films with Sham Benegal, and he kept going back, so he must have enjoyed being a slave. No, Sham taught us a very important lesson, you know, which we seem to have forgotten to write down in our present generation, which is that when you're working on a film and you're working with a director, you don't have a designation. Every little thing that happens on that set is your responsibility, whether it's somebody vomiting and you have to clean it, or whether you have to write a dialogue, or whether you have to keep continuity, or whether you have to give a clap. So you cannot ever say, in, in, on Sham's set, none of us could ever say, this is not my job. It was our job, period. And even the actresses, like Sme and everybody else, pitched in. Uh, when they were not shooting, they were doing production. Hmm. Or they were serving food. Hmm. There was no class hierarchy. Yeah, there, there was no class hierarchy. Right. There was only Sham and yeah. Govind yeah, and Kamat Mama, who right. you can see in the film. Yeah. And everybody else was a slave. <laughs> so um, perhaps either one of you can talk about this. I mean, is based on, is inspired by? Shanti Aika. Yeah, Hansa Vatkar, Hansa yeah. who was a Marathi actress right. in, in, the, in right. the early 50s where she died, uh, came from Konkan. She actually came from Savantwadi, which is where we shot most of her younger hmm. days. And uh, um, uh, it was a book written in Marathi. And it was a scandalous book as far as the Hindi movie industry was concerned at that time because everybody who was who too, was mentioned in the book in terms of who would use her, slept with her, abuse her, and what they did. So she actually decided that she was going to just open a can of worms. <laughs> okay, and they all collectively got together to try and ban the book. So outside of being printed in Marathi, which is it's even now very difficult to get hold of, but there are some copies floating around. And I do recommend the book because long before uh, any scandalous writing was ever done, she actually gave it shit straight from the shoulder. She's a very gutsy lady. And she told them, told it the way it was. No holds barred, no names not mentioned. Everybody's names were mentioned. But I wonder why, um, I mean, uh, so how much of this is that book? Because right before that, in, right when the titles are coming, it's you know the standard uh, disclaimer that comes that it bears no resemblance to any person living. No, you see, because uh, everybody wanted to take her to court and they managed to gang up together on her and, and uh, ban the book, uh, or tried to ban the book. Yeah. So it was only published in Marathi. There was never an English translation. Or, and it was not a very thick book. It was a thin um, uh, book. When I remember Sham, uh, sitting there and getting it translated into Hindi and in English. But uh, we sanitized it to a very large extent because at that time censorship in this country was really quite uh, uh, desperately uh, puritanical. Mm. So the story is hers. Uh, the narrative is where she started from, how she, how she made it. And the explicit details of how she was used and abused are, are not in the film. But you can make out that all the men that that she came across, one way or the other, uh, in some way used her. So uh, Bhumika was made, I think, in the late seventies. If I'm, if I, uh, do, do you remember what year it was? I don't remember the uh, date. Seventy-one. Seventy? Nay, 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 hosa. Seventy-one. Nay, it's later than that. I know exactly where I was in college then. <laughs> No, 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 71, I didn't have Ankur in the same Ankur 72, 73, this is here. This is 77, right? I was in, yeah, I remember I was in college then. Well, Ankur came 72 or 73. Yeah, Ankur was the first film. Right, right. Then no, but I was talking, Nishant was the second film. Yeah. So, but I'm just wondering, um, for, for Spitha Patalji, um, so there was Actually, Nishant. the first film that we did with me was before Ankur. 
uh, after Ankur. It was, uh, um, yeah, it, it was Charandas Chor. Charandas Chor. Yeah. So was this Smita Patel's third film probably? Uh, yes, after Nishant. Yes, yeah. it was yeah. a third film. Right? With so, us. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, uh, Anita, do you, do you have any recollections when your sister was uh, especially preparing for this role? Um, I have a very interesting story. I think you'll have to put the mic closer to your mouth. Yeah. Um, I can always stop in between if Amolji walks in. I have a very interesting story to share about this particular film. You know, there's a launi here. And the Launi requires a lot of bust movement. And speed didn't do a good <laughs> job of it. So Sham uh, knew that there was one person who is going to straighten her out, is what was my mother. So Sham called Ma and said, Ki ye tumhari beti kuch thik kaam kar nahi hai. That evening, and th this shooting was going on at Jyoti Studio, which was very close to where we lived. We lived in uh, Tardev. So that evening when Smi came back, mother ne bahut chumpi gaya uska. And she said, my mom told her that you have taken a commitment. So either you do a good job or you quit. You can't do this to anybody that you will do a lousy job. I will not st uh, stand it. And told her, whatever is expected of you, you should do it. I don't know later what happened, but that next day, my mother actually went to Jyoti studio without letting Smi know and stood in a corner and watched and made sure I, her daughter I, I, I delivered. Remember, I remember that when Ma came onto the studio and stood very quietly until we noticed her. And then uh, there was a flurry, and um, and Smi, of course, was being very self-conscious. See, what happened was that Smi had uh, been taken from being a, uh, a news reader in Marathi in Pune. That's where we actually found her. Uh, we found her on television, and she had such an engaging presence, and she was so popular, even and it was Marathi news that we realized that she was she had she had a future. She had she was just quite mesmerizing, regardless of what it was. And uh, though she knew how to do a lavni, the best part of it is she was a terrific dancer for everything else. But the lavni had certain slightly vulgarish movements, which she was hitchhitching about and, and not wanting to do it because, you know, she thought uh, she could get away with it. And Sham being Sham said, there's no way you're going to get away with this. If you want to learn how to redo the launi, we'll stop the shoot. We'll get her a launi teacher and teach you. And the fact was that there was nothing to teach her. She already knew the launi. And she was a damn good dancer. And you, that you can see as the result of after what Ma dressing down she gave and she landed up there. And then she did the thing she... she that, that is what, that was the time when Smi actually forgot about who she was as a person and became the person that uh, that she was acting as. And that transition for an actress is, is a very, very important one. Is that when you forget who you are and just play the role. And that was the time, it was after Bhumika, she actually decided that she will take up acting as a career. Until then, she was not sure because she had already refused Manoj Kumar for Roti, Kapda and Makan. Oh, really? <laughs> and Dev Anand for uh, that Dhamma Rodam. You know, she was really not, this was not her interest. She was never interested in all this jazz. But I think uh, Sham, and Sham has said this uh, in an interview that Sham convinced my father, Sham and my father got along like fire. And <laughs> And he, Sham convinced my dad, and then my dad had to convince my sister to do this. So it's a strange story. Wait, Devanand was going to cast Spita Patel in the Mumtaz role or the Zenith Aman role? You said Dhamma Rodam. No, no, that Dhamma Rodam wala. Hare Rama Hare Krishna ki baat kar rahe na? wala. Whatever that was. I don't know. And the funny part was, this is really funny. So when Manush, she said, no, no, mujhe nahi karna hai. Manoj Kumar ko laga ki shayad, you know, the parents, at that time, I think parents used to manage their daughters' careers. 
So Manoj Kumar thought maybe it has something to do with money. So he <laughs> went to my father and said, you know, whatever your conditions, blah, 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 I'll take care of it uh, if she could work. So my father had to explain to him that, sorry, I do not tell my children what they should do. This he was, couldn't believe it. This is after um, um, Nishant. I, that I don't remember. Yeah, it, it was, was after Nishant, Nishant because after Nishant, Nishant. Uh, though she didn't have the main role, it was, it was Shabana. She was riveting in her role. She was, and there was a poster of her in Shams' office. Oh, yeah. You know, I uh, Amolji is coming. I remembered actually between Bhumika and uh, Nishant, there was also Manthan. Hi, Amolji. Um, How are you? Long Good. time. Asim Chabra. Sorry. No, no, no. We we just started actually, so this is perfect timing, really. But I was just I was just telling them that I think Manthan came uh, before Bhumika. Manthan uh, was with Shabana. That was no, that. Manthan was not. No, no, Manthan no, no, was sorry. No, no, no. Manthan came much later. Much uh, later. Uh, uh, no, Manthan came before Bhumika. Correct. You're right. Uh, Manthan it, was before you. Before Bhumika. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. So, Amolji, welcome. Um, it was such a fascinating experience just watching you again. I was thinking, watching uh, your performance here, just I think two or three weeks ago, we saw Gulmohar. And I'm trying to wonder between Gulmohar and Bhumika, had you done any other negative roles? Quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> because, you know, one remembers you, of course, the, the Rajini Gandha gentleman. <laughs> um. <clears throat> In fact, uh, I don't see uh, too many younger people here. So uh, they would know all, all my uh, such performances. But of course, Bhumika was the first. In fact, I distinctly remember, if I can uh, share that uh, lovely uh, moment, Sham had called me mm, and he said he was going to make uh, a film based on Hansa Wadkar's uh, autobiography. Sankti Aika. So I said I was thrilled because Hansa Wadkar was my immediate neighbor in Shivaji Park and <laughs> I had grown up going to their house, uh, chatting with her, getting pampered by her. Her three daughters were my friends. So, so there was a uh, added uh, uh, angle to the whole thing. So Sham also got excited when he knew this. Uh, and then we discussed. And after a, a bit of discussion, Sham uh, said that uh, Amol, amongst our group, I am in absolute minority, but I think instead of playing the hero, you can play the villain. I jumped and I said, if Sham, you're giving me a choice, I would do only a villain and not the hero. So he got so happy. He called all his team members and... Uh, all, uh, all his slaves, as we called them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was a, a young uh, chief assistant at that time, I remember. No, no, no. Said, Look, I was slave number three. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, but I remember you as a... Very, uh, I, I was uh, participating in it in a very strong way, but I was still slave number three. <laughs> that, no, I don't know the hierarchy of what I could. Uh, so uh, it was uh, this my playing a villain, out and out villain, coming on the backdrop of my first three films which were super hits and uh, I was uh, considered as a successful hero. Correct. 
रजनीगंधा छोटी सी बात एंड चित चोर सो आफ्टर दैट माय चूजिंग भूमिका वाज अ डिजास्टर अकॉर्डिंग टू द इंडस्ट्री इनफैक्ट देर इज अनदर स्लाइट इंसिडेंट विच आई मस्ट शेयर राजकुमार बड़जात्या ऑफ द राजश्री फिल्म्स वेर आई हैड डन चिचोर विद दैम ही वॉज वेरी फॉन्ड ऑफ मी एंड वी हैड डेवलप्ड अ गुड रैपा सो ही कॉल्ड मी आफ्टर भूमिका वॉज रिलीज ही कॉल्ड मी एंड ही वॉज सो एजिटेटेड ही सेड दैट अमोल जी आपने ऐसा क्यों किया Why have you chosen to play a villain? People have loved you as a hero. Why do you want to play a villain? And he went on saying, "Na na na, ap aise role mat kijiye." I had to tell him. I had to tell him that uh, as an actor, I want to see all the unexplored uh, areas. what i can do where i can uh, prove my metal and therefore i have to explore many more things but that was bhumika and uh, now after gulmohar the kind of uh, feedback i am i mentioned about the younger generation uh, the kind of feedback i am uh, getting from most of them is oh we never expected you is this the first time you are doing this and uh, a negative character etc uh, etc et so i uh, i choose now not to tell the younger generation that try and go beyond uh, google and wikipedia <laughs> um, because uh, it is all only uh, on the surface that you get the information and whatever is popular easily available that information is available but you also asked me so i'll tell you uh one of my last uh, films was with viduvano chopra and that was khamosh in which i play the real murderer so it can't be uh, uh, <laughs> more black than that but that was a very fascinating uh, character but going to uh, not going to the absolute black shades of the character which in bhumika and uh, also in kamosh i have played quite a few uh, characters with lots of gray shades and which i love doing those uh, you will be surprised that uh, if i mention gharonda actually gharonda is uh, a boy with a lot of gray shades i mean what kind of a boy is he he uh, tells his girlfriend ke you get married to the other guy right ah uh, yeah. na na the boss is interested so you get married and we'll continue to have an affair uh i mean uh, that's an that arrangement <laughs> yes that's an arrangement and nowadays it's very common <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's interesting i mean the, the uh, definition of villain as you say i mean none of these were roles as villains i mean that sort of negative uh, much more negative than what you played in rajnikanthan chitchor of course but ha uh, huh, but in uh, we then, think of villain then, as pran you know? then <laughs> then no, i this, this performance was very nice but then in that case i was also not the hero of the mainstream cinema you take rajnikantha i mean what kind of a hero is he who never ever utters ke mai tumse pyar karta hu <laughs> throughout the film he never says that he is always late he keeps the girlfriend waiting he never 
all he talks about is his office politics. I mean, what kind of a hero is he? So, when you say that he is not the typical villain like Pran, I was neither the <laughs> hero uh, which like um, uh, Rajesh Khanna and Jitendra and Dharmendra and Amitabh Bachchan. But oh. you're, you're a very believable lead actor. You know, Rajesh Khanna, Amitabh Bachchan never played believable characters. What you played in Rajni Gandha is a character we recognize. My entire effort as an actor, I'm glad that you mentioned that. My entire effort as an actor has always been whatever character I play, it has to be believable, so much believable that you feel that, oh, just when you get out, you will meet this person. That much believable and whatever, with gray shades, in Garonda, in fact, I think <laughs> Uh, my, uh, I was very glad and proud that I made made him likable with all these grey shades. I made him likable because I uh, kind of worked more on his vulnerability than anything else. That this man is so vulnerable that. He will do anything which is probably stupid, idiotic, villainish, whatever you may call it. But because he is vulnerable, he, he can fall flat on his face. So let's get back to Bhumika again. Uh, 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 I mean, I'd love to hear your memory, especially of the making of Bhumika. We were talking about Smita Patel's role. Um, it's such a big ensemble cast. Um, you, you know, tell us about the, those experiences. And one of the incidents which left quite a what to say. I mean, and for it played on my mind for quite a few days. In fact, to be honest, there is that scene where I uh, beat her up. Now. I, being a person who never fights, but I also don't believe in raising my hands on a woman. I would never do that in my life. And we were working on that scene and there were a couple of takes and it was not working. Sham was not very happy with what Smita was doing. So, after two or three takes, I think, he just took me to the corner and he said, Amol, while doing the seed, you just slap her. I said, okay, we'll work that out. I'll tell Smita. And he said, no, don't tell her. Let it be unexpected. Because probably because of that, then she will emote what I want her to. I said, but Sham, I can't uh, hit her without her knowing. <laughs> he said, no, that's the order. As a director, I'm telling you, you go and. So I took a deep breath and uh, but genuinely, I mean, it was very tough for me. Uh, and Smita was a very dear friend. So uh, cheating on her, not letting her know what I'm going to do is something I would I would never do, neither professionally nor in, nor in personal life. So, uh, and then as the take went on, I just slapped her. And she was totally taken aback. I mean, naturally, because that wasn't rehearsed. The, nobody had mentioned that. And she was so taken aback. But being a fine actor, she knew that director hadn't said cut. So it was, the, it was still going on. And she went on performing and came out of that shock and all that. And the scene was complete. And Sham, uh, after he said, he clapped and, and then... I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> and I was 
profusely apologized to Smita and she said, no, 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 no. She was crying, actually. Uh, I said, I'm extremely sorry, Smita, but I couldn't help it because Sham told me not to tell you. She said, no, Amol, that's all right. That's, that's perfectly all right. You don't apologize because I'm, I'm glad that I could give what Sham wanted. But I was very upset. I was so upset that after the next scene started and all that, we were going through the motions, but I was sitting in a corner, very disturbed. So then Sham came to me, sat next to me, and uh, hugged me. And he said, Amol, you, I understand what you're uh, feeling, but there are certain moments where you have to break the mold. And as a director, when I tell you, it is not your responsibility. I said, yes, I understand all that. But I also, I mean, slapping a woman is something I would never, ever do. So he said, but you didn't do as Amol Palekar. You did it as Keshav Dalvi. Try and separate that. So then you will not feel so <laughs> miserable. And then Smita also came to me and she also sat next to me and she said, okay, Amol, in fact, I want to thank you. Don't feel apologetic, et cetera, et cetera. And, but that's, that was one incident which uh, played a lot on my mind. Shyam, I think it was also a therapist for his actors. <laughs> no, no, I remember in Ankur, uh, he did the same thing too. Uh, Shabana, she wasn't getting, you know, there's the scene where um, the Sa Sa Sadhu Meher comes back. Yes, yes. And yes. she's pregnant and she's inside this little hut. Yes. And it was a single take shot. And when we were rehearsing it, we just weren't getting it. And um, uh, because she, she wasn't breaking down. She needed her to break down. After Sadhu Meher gets beaten uh, up. No, after Sadhu Meher comes back after many years. Right, right, right. right okay, right. and she's pregnant from yes, yes. the landlord's yes. son. Yes. And uh, she doesn't know how Sadhu Mahir is going to respond right. to, the, to the baby. And Sadhu Mahir responds by saying, wow, we are, mm. we are going to be parents. Yeah. And he touches her stomach and, and she's so relieved because she's so scared at that time. She's holding a fetal ball position that she breaks down. That is the time she breaks down. Yes, yes. So we weren't getting that. And Sham took her for a little walk and, and uh, came back and we did that shot in one take. And then we packed up because the, uh, she was crying and crying and she wouldn't, you know, th there was no way to actually give any solace. Sam took her away and we packed up. And much, many months later, I asked uh, Shabana, what did Sham tell you? So she said, well, he told me, imagine the most important person in your life. And imagine that you have just got news that that person has died. Now go on and do the scene. And she was very close to her father, mm -hmm. Kefi Azmi. Mm -hmm. So she actually imagined Kefi Azmi had died and then that whole letting go and, and the, her nose was flowing and she wasn't looking great at all. It wasn't a cosmetic shot. If you remember that shot in Ankur, she wiped her nose and there's a tar coming out of her nose, you know, and it was like real. I mean, there's no way she could fake that. And uh, that is where she got a standing ovation in Berlin for that. Um, or batai, kuch, you know, other moments in the story, um, Sham Benegal directing you, or just the other actors. If you, you, I mean, you actually had lots of scenes all about Desh Pandey. Yeah, uh, who was a very, very fine actress. All of them, all the co-actors, mm, we were very good friends. Also, Marathi stage, actually. Yes, most of Sulba. Yeah. I, I, in fact, started my career, film career, with Sulba, Shantata Kotsalu. Mm -hmm. She was the heroine, and it, it is her film completely. I am one of the characters. But uh, so my uh, association and friendship with Sulba, then also Amrish Puri. Amrish Puri and I we belong to the 
same theater group. We have had such wonderful uh, uh, friendship. And uh, I, I grew up, I mean, <laughs> in fact, Dubey taught me how to stand up to Amrish Puri in theater. <laughs> I said, I can't. I mean, such a towering personality, such Tremendous voice. booming yes. voice. voice. Yes. Mere paas kuch nahi hai. Main kaise khada iske And then Dubey told me quite a few things, then taught me. But the main thing which I learned was again from Amrish Puri. Before every, I mean, we, we did a play called Hayavadan by Girish Karnaga. Now, in that play, before going on to stage, I used to be so tense that I used to start getting a back pain. So tense. I'm talking about first couple of performances. And Puri Saab, kya ho gaya? I said, no, I'm having back pain. He said, he would massage my back in the wings. Massage my back and then give me a nice thap karke peet pe. He said, jab kar perform. So, I mean, that was the kind of friendship and camaraderie that we had. Anant was also a very dear friend, very dear friend. So, all of us, when, uh, uh, when the shooting was not on, when I was not, we would sit down and do all kind of fattigiri. <laughs> we used to have a ball. And Sham, Sham also I knew much before I acted with him. Uh, in fact, uh, all these young directors at that time, Basu Chatterjee, Sham Benegal, Basu Bhattacharya, M.S. Satyu, I was privileged to work with each one of them. They were all part of the film society movement. And uh, there was a, a film society called uh, Film Forum. We all used to go there and see best of the European cinema there. So we used to meet there. We used to have a lot of debates, discussions after the screening. So we knew each other. It was, it was like uh, a lovely friend circle. My, my only uh, grievance or complaint with Sham, which I told him that, uh, that after Bhumika, he never gave me another role. <laughs> so you were so good in it that that that's becomes like the ultimate benchmark. It, it was a gold standard. Actually. Yeah, a gold standard. And it was very nuanced. Right, right through. You know. And and also the way they aged you, you know, from when you were very young, and then sort of, uh, you know, when when you get married, and at the end, it's a real transition of the character. Really, that again, I, mean, I must say. Every little detail, including my look, how I should look, what is to be done, was done by Sham personally. Every little detail, thickness of mustache, to clean shave, etc., etc., all the transitions, we worked it out earlier, and it was completely Sham's vision. Completely. Anita, you, you mentioned something earlier. Um, until Bhumika Smita Patel was actually still thinking of giving up? She didn't. She wasn't actually, ever in it. Huh? Uh, it wasn't a question of giving up. Huh. She didn't want to be a part of it. Uh, but with all these amazing performances. No, no, but these were all, you know, uh, 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 15 days of the year, 20 days of the year. She wasn't like doing a regular kind of thing. She they weren't other films, yeah, pro the, projects. The, yeah, they were, she only worked with Sham. Yeah. I have a very interesting story for yeah. Amulji. Yeah. So after Bhumika was released, <coughs> you know, I think everybody 
congratulated my sister, how good she was. For first me, no award could mean anything until her mother told her that you were good. That was the final award. Baki sab jahannu mein jaye. So she came, you know, Ma came and saw the movie and so she said, yeah, you were good, but you were not as good as Amol. <laughs> My sister cried her heart out. <laughs> You probably I, don't know this, no, but I, this I know, is the story. <laughs> I know that. I know that story. And then I I also had a dialogue with your mother. And I told her that uh, it's not fair on your part to say this because Smita has given outstanding performance. I am a trained actor. She is not. There is a major difference between that. And for uh, such a novice, so to say, I mean, not trained, not having done theater, not having done any any work, to come out with such a performance. And beyond that, I said, she doesn't have to perform because, and which I can say about Smita's all the performances, even in bad commercial cinema. Her intensity is something which is unmatched. She is so intense, so intense and so genuine that you as an audience just get mesmerized and carried away by that. You know, when you said bad Bollywood films, um, one of my favorite Smita Bottle moments, that song that she sings with Amitabh Bachchan, wo barish wale, wo kaun, uh, huh? Huh? Aaj Rapat Lai De. My God, she, they, they, I mean, they were great. They were so hot together. Uh, she was brilliant. Uh, you and know. she came home and cried and cried <laughs> and cried. Why? Why do I have to I think we should open up but, to the audience. But you're a natural. Nah? I'll tell you that. Yeah. Because when, once she got into uh, over her... Basic inhibitions, then she was just unstoppable. Yeah. Questions from the audience? I'm sure somebody has some questions. Come on, all the gossip behind the scenes and, and all the controversy uh, that was I, there. <laughs> why didn't Sham take Shabana and why did he take this novice uh, girl? Shabana was an accomplished actress and he was, she was already, already a regular. There was this huge ye, ye, ye uh, gossip, to go, you know. But she had done, she had done Manthan. Manthan was, she was yeah. very, very good in yeah. Manthan, yeah. But I, I will, want to say that for a 21-year-old girl who is totally untrained and who has not lived life, at 21 years of age, how much of a life have you seen? For her to give this kind of a performance, starting from a young girl all the way to a middle-aged woman, I thought it was a, a so phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, Bumika, the, you see, this was the whole context. The debate given within the unit was, why didn't we take Shavana? Because she would have given you a far more uh, complex and in-depth kind of thing, or we thought she would. And why are we taking Smi, who's completely uh, newbie, you know, as far as this kind of complexity is concerned. She never played this range. And that wasn't Sham taking a risk. But he went with his gut. He was, he's such an intuitive director that he knows, when he sees somebody, he knows, okay, this is what I'm going to do with her. And, and nothing can then stop them. I'll just, uh, since there are no questions, let me... So there's one there, but any... No, no, no. Go, go ahead, you had okay. a question. Uh, this question, I have always felt like asking uh, Shamji. Uh, Sangte Aika for us, um, I've read the original uh, book also, and there is a Lavni frame of context. And we've seen Lavni also. And I've seen uh, Marathi films uh, from 50s and 60s also. Uh, they used to have uh, this typical classical Lavani frame. Yeah. And then came the Dada Konke, then came the commercial, then came Natrang. So we've seen the changing phase of Lavani. To me, 
सांगते आहे का वन थिंग आय मिस इज दॅट काइंड ऑफ लावणी इन दॅट फिल्म वॉज देर अ डिस्कशन ऑन दॅट वॉज इट अ रिझन वाय श्यामजी नेव्हर थॉट ऑफ हॅव्हिंग एनी ऑफ दॅट well as you as you know we we had to sanitize the book to very large extent because there was such an uproar you know in the whole thing yeah. so even the launi for instance the tamasha launi which which they do in pune all the time on the chok you know when there are 5000 10000 people watching Used and it's a, it. yeah it's a it's a 360 degree yeah. stage yeah. it's not one way facing like we are facing you all you uh, the stage in the middle the audience is all around you know and therefore they they perform for everybody and it's it's a very robust and very ribald uh, form of folk uh, dance actually it's got lots of sexual nuances it's very overtly sexual as a matter of fact and they make crack jokes also on the on the stage about the sexuality of the people and people laugh and the women also in the audience also cover their faces and laugh you know so i've seen i've seen so actually was there any specific reason why he avoided all that i don't know i think she was a little uncomfortable and so was he and because see it need not be uh, sexuality involved also there is something called baithaki chi lavani also hmm. which of course hamsa wadkar was not, not doing part, that yeah, for sure yeah. but nonetheless he he could not somehow uh get the nuance of a tamasha lavni in sangte aika is something i always miss amol you probably know more about that than, than no, i but do i i don't know why he chose uh i know that no for a fact that there was a lot uh, quite a bit of discussion between tendulkar and uh, sham on the script part of it because tendulkar was uh, the one who had interviewed and had a discussion with hansa uh, wadkar and then uh, that's how that book had come tendulkar was greatly part of that uh, whole exercise so i i don't know i mean i i never asked this question I, or it never occurred to me but uh, i think uh, sham probably wanted to concentrate more on the human being of a successful heroine that aspect and her personal relations uh, almost all relationships that hansa wadkar also had uh, were a failure so why why did the relationships fail and i think sham was trying to focus more on that is is what i i mean looking at the film also no but I, at, at the same time he still made her do the lavni a couple of times because he was happy with how still tit she was in terms of a uh, uh, movement so he really knew what it was all about so he he wanted to somewhere come at least half way down the mark instead of just sanitizing it totally <laughs> there's a question at the back chintal so this question could be answered by any of the panelists or the moderator while i was watching this film i was uh, wondering if there were parallels between uh, hansa wadkar's life and silk smitha's life because she was again an actress who was um, you know um, sexually exploited and even uh, punished for you know be just being the kind of person that she was Uh, at least when i saw uh, the movie on silk smitha i was just thinking back to that movie when i was watching this i wondered if that parallel struck anybody else i think you'll find in the movie industry's history a lots of uh, hansa wadkar and lots of silk smitha it's not just two them it's just that on two of them there were movies made but in actual fact uh, i think it was very very exploitative it was highly patriarchal and still is still today anyone else any last word from you i mean i'm sure we can spend the whole night no, not, <laughs> not memories the, and all not the, certainly not the last word but as i said i remembered uh, one very lovely incident with smita uh, 
while we were discussing just now uh, that she didn't want to do films, etc., etc. I remember once uh, Smita came, we we stayed very near. Uh, they stayed at Fajet uh, Hill. Fajet Hill, yes. Fajet Hill, and I was staying at Gam Devi, and. Uh, Shams uh, studio, Shams office was Jyoti studio, yes. corner of uh, Grand Ken Road Station. Ken Kennedy Bridge. Yes. So it was uh, all all in a vicinity kind of a thing. Uh, so Smita came to my house and she said, Amol, I want, uh, want your advice. I said, what? She said, uh, there is a play that is being offered to me. Uh, it's a very fascinating role, but I have never done theater, so I don't know whether I should get into this. Or n so I asked about what play, etc. It was really a very wonderful play called Chinna uh, by uh, Waman, Waman something, I forget his Waman son. No, not Kendri, much Kendri before Kendri. No, 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 no. Waban something, he was a young, uh, young writer. It was directed by Sadashivam Rapurukar and uh, starring Ashalata Vapgaukar, Dilip Kulkarni and Smita Patil. It was a uh, path-breaking uh, play produced by INT. Uh, so we had a discussion. And I told her that if it is a good role and it's a good play, you should go ahead and do it. But no, but I am scared. I have never done this. I said, but you had never done films also. So oh, what is there for you to worry about? You have your strengths. And the difference, main difference between films, film acting and theater acting, they, you have the advantage in theater that there is a prolonged uh, period of rehearsals where you can get into the character, you can get into the work out, the craft. Every, every possible thing is worked out over a longer period. In films, it is just quick cut and paste kind Correct. of a thing. I mean, I had to learn quite a few things <laughs> you know, in film acting because I came from theater. So, so I told her all this and uh, she said, are you sure? I said, yes. Then she invited me for the grand rehearsal. And I still remember, grand rehearsal was very nice. The only thing I could find in Smita was, she was very diffident. And that diffidence was coming through. So after that, she came and told, asked me. So I told her, I said, Smita, you have worked. You've worked out. It's a good director, good script. Everything is working out very well. Don't get overawed by Ashalata Vabgaukar because she was a superstar of uh, not only Marathi theater, but films also. And Dilip Kulkarni also was a senior actor, very fine actor. I said, don't get overawed by them. You, whatever you are doing, do it with complete confidence and everything will be fine. And that's what it happened. And it was a wonderful performance, lovely performance. People still remember that and talk about it. <laughs> but uh, by the time that play started and they had about 10, 10, 15 performances, by that time, every top hero in Hindi film industry was trying to woo Smita so much. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I, I have seen uh, at, at the rehearsals of Chinna, I have seen Vinod Khanna waiting outside for her to finish uh, the rehearsal so that he could talk to her. 
so all the top heroes they wanted to act with smita and they were trying to convince her it so happened that uh, as the play also succeeded then i think she couldn't uh, resist all these pressures of all the heroes and top uh, production uh, companies wanting her to do films so she took a, a bold step and went into the films and uh, then that was the loss of theater i thought okay um no more questions thank you all three of you oh there is one yeah alone in the film was this the raag ali in the in no the we had actually shot the fact that she's all alone and her daughter's got married and gone off and everybody's abandoned her and she's in this guest house the which bedroom, yes. yeah and there's a fan going yeah and there's a fan going on and 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 that actually in in the book uh, i mean she uh, she didn't die but when she died she died alone that that much we, we know and we dived in the same guest house that she was actually staying in i just wanted to confirm this wasn't the end in the original no uh, before we go i actually i have to share something very important for you i was not supposed to be here i am actually representing my nephew smita's son who was originally supposed to be here uh he injured his back and he's under treatment he oh, couldn't come that. here so he said at least you go and convey my apologies so i am here to convey his apologies and his uh, deepest gratitude to anuradha and g5 for screening this film so please uh, allow me to say that on his behalf uh, and my most profound gratitude to one and only sham babu it is wonderful to have you because you know she has memories also how smita would react then she would come home etc i mean that that was very nice to know really uh so he's too young <laughs> i mean he, he he i don't think he was there when when we we did this film no and the the worst the worst part in our household was my mother would say tumhare awards tumhare crowns ghar ke bahar the minute you enter the helish par andar aai na you are my daughter and you shall behave the way i ask you to do and this continued until the day she died and i'm not joking not 1% of joke this was how it was and i'm the, sure the only mitali one, knows yeah, this and prahlad knows this the only one who got away with it was manya <laughs> <laughs> well thank you thank you all yeah okay